Hello everyone and welcome to another randomized gaming video. I am of course as always am your host Random Gamer Riven and in this today's gameplay video we're taking a rather extensive look at the Atari Anniversary Edition as you can see here which is a collection of classic 1970s and 1980s arcade games from Atari. Feel the games really speak for themselves, but there's not much music or anything with a lot of these really early games. So I'll just provide a bit of commentary along the way, a bit about the various games. We're going to play through them in order and a little bit about the collection itself. Now, there is actually a whole variety of Atari collections over the years. Um, this collection was also released on PC and PS1. There are a couple of game changes as well on the PS1 version. Black Widow and Space Jewel from 1982 are in the PS1 version. But on the Dreamcast and PC edition, you get Millipede and you get Crystal Castles, which I think for the Dreamcast is probably the better deal. Although that said, you can get Crystal Castles and Millipede on the PS1 in a different Atari collection. Actually, it's the arcade's greatest hits, the Atari Collection 2 is on PS1, and that's a collection of Midway and Atari games, and that includes the two mentioned missing ones on the PS1 collection. Right, there's an awful lot of Atari collection games and all these games and more were actually included on the Atari Analog Collection on PS2 and Xbox as well. One of the reasons I'm covering this is because A it's nice and lovely in VGA, also the fact that this did not get a European Dreamcast release, in fact I believe it's a US exclusive only so it's always nice to get a regional exclusive title on Dreamcast. Amelia is just a collection of old arcade games although it's quite a fairly impressive collection with quite a large amount of options and Pong itself is actually a recreation not emulation because those really early arcade games didn't actually use microchips so you effectively have to recreate them. So you should recognize the game on screen if you don't shame on you you need to do some gaming research this is the iconic asteroid from 1979. And it's fair to say this is probably one of those classic arcade games. Highly addictive. This is most of these games, it's just an interesting mix. I grew up in the 80s, so most of these games I did play in 80s arcades, but one or two of them, certainly Pong, you never saw in 80s arcades. Pong seemed to get decommissioned and taken out of service relatively quickly. Certainly in UK arcades, Asteroids I did see around a lot, Space Invaders I played a lot, Tempest as well, which is on this collection, but Space Invaders of course is a title game, but it was interesting, some of these games clearly had a lot longer longevity than others. So there's a brief playthrough of the original Asteroid. I'm just going to show you a couple of minutes to each game. And then at the end, I'm going to show you, go through and show you all the advertising flyers and promotional material. Because it's actually quite a nice collection. It shows you a huge raft of promotional material. And what I will say, if anyone notices any promotional material from this collection that isn't freely, that hasn't been scanned in on the internet, let us know here at Randomized Gaming. And we'll actually go and digitally upload them to the net, certainly on our blog, because... A lot of this stuff I don't think is actually archived on the net itself. Some, Most of it will be, but one or two bits I think they may well have included stuff that isn't. So as you can see here, you do get the sort of sets. There's quite a huge range of scaling options here with Asteroid Deluxe. You do get the outer shell. You can adjust the aspect ratios. You can adjust the positioning as well. And you can have the cabinet on off. The cabinet's quite good for a couple of games like Pong, because Pong itself is a very basic game. One or two games the the cab using the cabinet uh, on lay does shrink the play area a little bit too much. This is Asteroids Deluxe and it is from 1980. One thing I will say is you'll see there's a nice background art in the background. That is a recreation of the background art. That is not a scan of the original art. It looks similar. It has a ship in similar position, the explosion in similar position. But when I actually compared the two as I found a few videos on YouTube of people actually having the original thing. You could see the background art quite clearly. I noticed there were some subtle differences, so it's a recreation of the background art, not the original one. 
Most of these games are fairly accurately emulated. I won't say they're entirely correct. I felt Crystal Castles seem to be running a little fast. But overall, it's a fairly accurate emulation pack, considering how early these games were. I must admit, I never actually saw Asteroids Deluxe around that much in the arcades in the 80s. Harder game than the original Asteroids and does a few more interesting things like that enemy there that splits into multiple things. So it's a, there's a bit more gameplay, but it's not a huge improvement over the original game. One thing I should just briefly mention... Basically, it seems to be an issue with El Gato. They do not like vector graphics at all, the capture card. Some of the lines lose their colour in the video, and it's clearly an issue with the El Gato capturing vector gameplay graphics. So you will see the odd grey line that should be coloured. And maybe a fault with MP4. It's done, done basically some part of our setup it was fine actually on my display screen when i watched the video recapture later there were just some weirdness and that some of the colors were missing and that's actually an issue with the capture itself so that's modern capture setup failing So we're playing, having a brief go on everything on the collection. Um, this is Battle Zone. This is another really iconic arcade game. Not that I ever saw it in the arcade. This is one that everyone said about, but I never saw it in the arcade at the time. Battle Zone 1980. I think this one may have, may have perhaps come out of circulation quite quickly, but it is a sort of iconic game. And this is actually a really good recreation of it. So if you actually see the game on MAME at the minute, you'll notice that MAME emulates the entire game black and white and that's because I believe the colour of the actual game green was created by it was actually a black and white game and then it was actually the vector monitors that gave it its colour although the red arrays are actually correct as well so I assume there may have been two monitors I was actually had to look at MAME which is now just a black and white emulation because that's how it originally was and then I believe it was the actual vector monitors that gave it the green and red colour. Now this is actually probably one of the best recreations of Battle Zone because it's because of how they're giving you the actual overlay and it works really well. This is, I actually found this a better, although it may not be as accurately emulated as main, this feels more like the original arcade version. So this is a really nice way they've done it for this collection. Certainly with ga old games like Battle Zone. So basically you have the little radar at the top that shows you the enemies. You also have the left and right objective thing that tells you whether they're to the left or the right. Simple enough gameplay. Find the tanks and shoot them before they shoot you. Although your tank is incredibly slow to manoeuvre so if you're not fast and accurate you will get killed very quickly. So here we go with another iconic game, Centipede, from 1981. I never actually played this one much myself, but I know a lot of people who did. I always preferred Space Invaders, but this is a hugely iconic and very popular game. And I believe the emulation is very, very faithful to this one. Admittedly, this, was, this pack was done in about 2001, so the emulation won't probably be quite as good as main, but it's an accurate recreation, which... A lot of the time it's just what people want. You don't want an exact, you prefer it to look and play similar to how you remember even if it's not quite 
emulated 100%. But yes, this is very much the sp very much the Space Invaders format. Okay, next up we have Crystal Castle and a little Easter there, egg apparently I was just reading. Um, this, so this game actually has a ton of hidden secrets and warps and I was able to test a few out, even show one of them in the video and they do appear to all be present and correct. This game moves surprisingly quickly. Apparently another Easter egg, although I didn't actually test it out myself, is FXL is actually on this first stage will actually show you the initials previous player score or the top player score a nice little subtle easter egg there are a number of hidden warps and bonuses this is actually quite an in-depth title crystal castles it's far more in-depth i used to actually have this one on the zx spectrum many years ago but this the arcade version really is quite a bit nicer it's actually one of those games that is surprisingly in-depth once you understand how it works and all the mechanics and the hidden mechanics. This is one of those games that gives the impression of being quite a simplistic Pac-Man client and when you actually see how it all works it's vastly more complex and interesting. So for instance like those the gem-eating monsters you can eat them while they're eating the gems but they'll injure you if you attack them any other point. Um, you get a bonus score if you're the one that grabs the last gem because some of the enemies do eat gems. There, you can kill certain enemies like the witch if you wear the magic hat. Some enemies you can stun by jumping over. Some enemies are completely invulnerable to everything you chuck at them. There's also the swarm there that as you can see there just killed me but that's another quite extensively tricky enemy that comes in to try and spe speed you up so to speak. And this second run just showing you the secret warps as there are quite a few of them so you can jump up there and that will warp you to another stage. There are a couple of warps, I think there's about, I saw there was 10 worlds looking over a guide to this although I think some of the stages are repeated but it's a surprisingly complex challenging game that adds an awful lot of depth to it so this is a really really nice one Crystal Castles. And probably this is my most favourite game of all of them on the collection apart from Tempest. Basically this collection is a combination of two previous PC collections. It also includes all the game from the Saturn and PS1 collection entitled Atari's Greatest Hits, the Atari Collection 1. Thank you. 
This is Gravatar. This is um, a very in-depth game. I don't ever remember seeing this one in the arcades. This is a vector game. My only gripe with Gravatar is I had an issue where you can't actually expand the screen as big as you need to. It feels like the game's not scaling correctly. You couldn't quite scale it all the way. So um, you'll notice I scale it up and this is the max you can scale it to, which does make things a little hard to see. It's actually a um, very impressive title. I've not really played this one before at all, but I was actually very impressed with it because it actually has a, basically a form of level structure. So basically this is like a world map section. You can still get chased by enemies and there I badly crashed into the sun. But basically the objective is to go to each of the different world areas to then shoot the gun turrets, collect the fuel, for fuel to complete each area and move on to the next. So you actually have a really nice subtle level progression. And this is actually a 1982 game. And yeah, as I mentioned earlier, you will see some slightly grey, greeny lines. They should all be green, but that's an issue with the capture setup. Or more particularly, not an issue with the setup itself, it's more particularly um, an MPEG-4 issue, it seems. So there you destroy the gun turrets, clear the stage and then you, you notice the, the area I was has gone and then I move on to the next and each of them gives you different bonus scores once you clear them and each of them gets progressively harder as well so I feel like there's exploring a galaxy, it's actually really nice for an 82 arcade game, it's got some really impressive, a few of these Atari games and some really interesting mechanics that would later go on to be the sort of staple of many of the modern video games. Even if some of them were a little bit unconventional for the arcade format. Okay, this is Millipede from 1982. This is the sequel to Centipede, so basically very similar to Centipede. The only real change, you've got a few nice new enemies and there's also, you can shoot a puff of smoke thing that basically kills off everything if they fly into it. But other than that, it's pretty much the same game. Okay, here we go with Missile Command. Now, this is another absolutely iconic game that you had numerous PDFs of the Amiga 
back in the day, but this is Missile Command from 1980. Very, very straightforward game. Very simplistic, very addictive. You basically have to protect your city from alien invaders, fire rockets, and you've got to let the inertia explosions take them out. Still an iconic game. You've got three bases. You've got six or seven cities, depending on your settings. And I should say this has got quite a lot of dip switches as well, so there are plenty of options to play around with all the different games. This is really good fun. Another, this is a really timeless one, one that you did see in arcade slightly later. Some of the, I said, some of the early Atari games I just think, don't think were as fun, but a couple of them, like Missile Command, even now, still very, very enjoyable and addictive, even if the gra graphics are very simplistic. Okay, now next up is Pong, and Pong is not a game technically emulated in MAME, it's actually recreated in MAME, and this collection is re a recreation of Pong as well. For starters, Pong doesn't actually have any AI. The original arcade game required two players, you both had to each control a baton. So if you didn't have a second player, you basically have to play it singularly and move the two batons independently. And basically the winner is the first player to get to 11, although there's an option to give you 15 in this version. There's a few dip switches, I'm not sure whether the original arcade had those dip switches. This is a very faithful recreation of Pong. But like I said, this AI single player mode is completely unique to this collection because Pong did not originally have AI, it was purely required two players. So this is an interesting thing. This is a recreation of the original game, which is nice to see because you don't often see Pong included in collections. It would be nice if they actually included a recreation of Computer Space. That I would say because Computer Space is one game that they've not recreated and I think even MAME has included a recreation. There is actually, a, I did see there is a series of developers that are trying to recreate the really old arcade games pre-microchips. But the problem you have is computer space, I believe, is the, there's still some wrangling over some of the old arcade games. Computer space is seen as the first commercial one. Pong is seen as the most first real successful commercial video game. But computer space, there were a lot of earlier games before that in labs at universities. But no, because no one's actually quite sure what the first video game is. I mean, there's some argument over what is a video game or not. I would argue it needs to have a screen, but as you can see there, you've got the various options. None of those would be in the original version because you didn't have an AI opponent. It required two players. But yes, it's the history of video games is quite interesting is that we're not entirely sure what the first video game is. I, I would say I, I would argue that the first video game would actually need to be a screen game and there's some people are arguing electronic games. So 
just to confirm, Pong was, of course, from 1972. And Computer Space was actually done by Synergy Engineering, who later had to rename themselves to Atari. And that was done in 1971. So just to give you an idea of the, the time scale between Pong and Computer Space. So yeah, Synergy Engineering was Atari. There's an interview with Nolan Bushel and he explains why they renamed it Synergy to Atari in the interview. I think I might save that for a later date. But well, this is Super Breakout. Now, Super Breakout had three modes, and it does include all three modes. Again, this is actually a black and white arcade game originally. I did see a few owners saying about it. What, how it was coloured is that you actually had to layer strips over the screen. So the original arcade game was actually a black and white one, and basically the colour is actually strips. So again, there's some slight colour recreation here. It's basically good colour scripts laid over the screen. I saw a guy actually showing the actual original arcade. There are three modes, and basically this emulation version does include all three modes, like cavity, progressive, and double, I believe. And each one relates to the format of block. So this is actually the sequel to the original Breakout. The Super Breakout was in 1978. I think Ali Breakout this is a really sort of early impressive game. Alleyway took the formula and spruced it up with Taito's later titles, but... This is Super Breakout, very good fun, very tricky as well because the bat's so small so you really have to get used to moving the ball left and right but this does include all three grain modes there so you've got cavity, double and so it goes through the complete Super Breakout experience. Uh, and here we come to the meat and grind of this collection. Or should I say the absolutely classic show-stopping title Tempest. This does include both versions, the original version and the Tubes hack that was developed by an arcade owner to make the game harder. This is, I mean, I, we've already covered Tempest 2000 on the channel, although I didn't actually over say much about it in that video. It was purely a nice little gameplay style, but this is a, a, an absolute iconic game. And it, it really was a high point of the sort of Atari games over the years. There's a, there was a great interview with the developer on the Saturn collection. We do have the Saturn collection, so maybe I'll actually at some point upload those videos where he talks about like the game was designed to sort of creatures coming up from some sort of abyss from the ground. I mean, it is just a superbly playable, highly fast, highly enjoyable. a highly impressive game and even I remember this one round in the sort of late 80s arcade this was still one game that was going strong Space Invaders and Tempest were always even long after they had been released you would usually find a cab or two because there would occasionally still be people playing this is, it's a real classic it's just so addictive so simplistic but it just gets the gameplay spot on Tempest was created by Dave Toya who also did Missile Command Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, and last but very not least, we have Warlord, which is another cult classic title. Now, Warlord is an interesting one because this actually includes both the upright and the cabinet versions of the game. So there's slightly different graphical effects. The cocktail version, which you see briefly at the background here, has a black has a black background. The upright cabinet, which you see now, basically had a recreation, a sort of background art, and it was projected onto this. Now, one bug I have noticed with this is that the the blue warlord castle should be on the right side of the screen where the purple one is. Whether that's because the game was reflected or whether they've made a mistake in emulation, but basically the colours are actually, they should be flipped at this point. So I think it might even be an issue where they've not reflected it properly because of course the screen itself was projected onto another th backdrop. Or whether they've just made a mistake in the emulation. But yeah, there's one or two faults with this version on this collection. Uh, one issue, another issue I did notice is the background. Again, it's a reproduction of the original background art from the upright cabinet version of Warlord and it's not that faithful to the original art in comparison to the, the Asteroid Deluxe one. The art doesn't look particularly good. In fact it looks like they didn't even have a scan of it, they just sort of recreated a bit that looks a bit similar. Well, I actually, I actually managed to get quite a good picture of the original background art for Warlord and it was very different. So again this basically uses the Pong format only now you have four players fighting out over a castle. And again, it's not a game I saw around that much back in the 80s, but apparently it was very popular. I must admit, I can see why it's quite it was popular. It's actually a very good fun game. You basically have to... It's basically, again, it's protecting your castle, and basically it's a bat and ball game like Pong. But this time, the blocks are your castle, and basically you've got to try and wear down the opponent's castle and hit the Black Knight before... and defeat them before they defeat you and knock down your castle and the more castles you knock down the more fireballs start appearing on screen and once you defeated your three opponents the game then gets slightly harder and you start all over again until you yourself are defeated. So really simplistic, very very enjoyable, very addictive. This was four players in the arcade so I imagine you got a lot of fun with the four if you and four friends were playing. And surprisingly challenging and it is actually you learn a few tactics so you can hold the fireball and spit it out at different angles which enables you to attack from certain points as the more fireballs come along though there does come a point where basically you need to make sure you kept as much of your castle undamaged because once you get three and four i think i had three fireballs on screen i assume you can get four but once i once you start getting three fireballs on screen you are going to take damage to your castle so it's just trying to limit the damage and making sure the fireballs fall towards areas where you've still got lots of wall. But very straightforward and a very addictive game. And although Warlords is not a game I played myself back in the 80s arcades, I can see why so many people enjoyed it. And interestingly, there are actually two remake versions or two modern updates on the Xbox 360 as well. Thank you. 
Okay, so for the second part of the video, we're going to take you through the actual archive. I'm going to show a brief snippet of the interview with Nolan Bushnell. I'm not going to show it all, though, just to show you a brief sample of what it's like. This was all included on one of the other collections as well. But you can see there, just going over the games again, you had asteroids, asteroids like Battlezone, Centipede, Crystal Castles, Gravitar, Millipede, Missile Commander, Pong, Super Breakout, Tempest, Warlords, and if you notice there on the bottom right corner, press Y for Archive. My very first experience with electronic games, if you were to consider them to be video, would be at the University of Utah. At the time, there were about five places where there were video screens connected to computers. The University of Utah happened to be one. Okay, that's just a brief snippet of a section of the interview. It's actually over about 30 minutes long if you include all the um, various sections from the interview. It's actually a really nice interview of Nolan Bushnell where explains the various history of Atari. Now, you'll hear some music in the background. I have added that music on just because there is no background noise or anything in this archive section. It's a little bit dull. It's not like the Capcom one where you've got a really nice subtle background piece of music. So I've gone and added a music piece that I feel is quite appropriate, sort of 80s themed one to go along with this arcade collection. Admittedly this is 70s and 80s but I thought we'll go for something similar electronic and just something that's quite not too bad to listen to because if you go to the YouTube music library I wanted to find a song that you could listen to for a long period without going inside. So you can see there is lots of digital scans of a whole host of media from pin badges which are quite nice to see. There's actually some really nice pin badges as well as an official Atari collection. I did discover a Crystal Castle one on a few websites later on. I'm not sure whether that's actually shown on this collection, but you've got badges, a whole host of Atari media. So you realise how big the company were in the 70s and 80s with their consoles and their arcade machines and all the various sort of merchandise they were putting out. Now there's an awful lot of Atari merchandise. This collection includes pretty much every packaging art, every arcade flyer, I think pretty much all of them are included, but even a few that I think may not be available readily on the internet as well, some of them are really interesting. And if there is any that isn't included readily on the internet, let me know and I will scan them in and upload them. Just need to get the adjustments right because the default resolution can sometimes not be quite right for each of the pictures. But yeah, car stickers and just about everything going. These were the sort of modern day equivalent of your social media ads and all your sort of web YouTube videos, etc. You've just got a whole host of products put out there by Atari. It's really nice to see all this media actually. There's also a brief promo video of Tempest on the Atari 2600, I believe. Later on, I, I do actually show that, although you can't see much, and I did find a few other people that uploaded the, that video to YouTube as well. So it's interesting, they've got a lot of prototype and a few unreleased bits and bobs here. This goes on for about 20 minutes in total. I covered it, so I basically pretty much covered everything bar the Nolan Bushell interview. 